Welcome to Historical Thinking Skill 3, Comparison and Contextualization. These are two different skills that the College Board wants you to be able to master before you take the AP exam. So when we're looking at comparisons, we want you to be able to describe, compare, and evaluate multiple historical developments within one society or within one or more um, developments across or between different societies. Most of the time when you have a comp comparative essay on the AP exam, it's going to be asking you to go outside one civilization. They want you to look at two different societies. Um, and you want to be able to take into consideration chronological and geographical context. For example, it, they're not going to ask you necessarily to compare two civilizations outside at the same time period. Um, they possibly could, but more than likely they're going to be asking you within the same time frames. Um, you also have to have the ability to identify, compare, and evaluate multiple perspectives on a given historical experience. We'll work through this um, idea several times throughout the, the course as we look at different point of view on, let's say, something like the Fall of Rome. If we're looking at the Fall of Rome, you could go into Barnes & Noble and find a hundred books on the different reasons for the fall of Rome. You have one that focuses on the invaders from the north, or you have one that focuses on water supplies, or you have one that focuses on the impact of Christianity. That is something that um, you will need to be able to compare and judge for yourself which one of those you agree with the most. Contextualization is a little bit different than comparing. Contextualization is where you connect historical developments to specific circumstances in time and place. This is also more, contextualization will also include more geographical area and we're looking at a lot of national and global processes when we're looking at contextualization. Here's a graphic that tries to explain contextualization a little bit better. When you attempt to contextualize, you place an event, illustrated by circle A, into a bigger circle, which is illustrated by circle B. So for example, in our Fall of Rome issue, if we were looking at religion, the issue would be um, circle A would be the development of new, of Christianity. Your circle B would be the impact of new cultural ideas throughout the Roman Empire. So Christianity is just one of the small cultural changes that happened that um, leads into the welcoming of new cultural ideas in the Roman Empire. Comparison is a specific type of contextualization. You take a big picture idea and apply evidence to it. Um, all of your comparison essay prompts give you one level of contextualization for you to apply evidence. And here's what I mean by that. If you were asked to compare and contrast the rise of classical age empires, your first context is about the political rise of empires. You would need to narrow that context to an aspect of political rise. Are you talking about government? Are you talking about military? Are you talking about geographical expansion? Are you talking about cultural or social control? So basically what you're taking, the contextualization that the prompt gives you is, po is political rise. And then you need to take that to narrow it down so that you can get that circle of A in the graphic to get that evidence into your essay.